In addition to being the most powerful digital sculpting and painting package available, ZBrush gives you the ability to render your creations with astonishing realism and style. To further enhance your creativity, a new set of filters have been added that allow you to make creative adjustments to your image after it has been rendered. These are the BPR filters found in the render palette. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can apply the BPR filters to a render of the Centaur model. So first I'm going to start by creating a BPR render of the model on the canvas. The filters are found in the render palette under the heading BPR filter. The filter interface is created so that you can layer a number of filters on top of each other. I'll start by turning on the F1 filter and I'm going to switch the filter to the bright color red. And this is going to add red to the rendered image. You can see as I pull up the strength, the entire image has a red tint to it. So as I move the mask slider to the right, you'll see that the red coloring is now just restricted to the model. As I move it towards the left, you can see that the red color is now uh, filtered towards the background. The Fresnel slider pushes the filter to the edges of the model. As I move it to the left, it pushes the effect of the filter more towards the uh, parts of the model that face the camera. And the Fresnel exponent slider will allow you to adjust the fall off of the effect. After adjusting how the filter is applied, I can also set the blending mode of the filter. The blending modes are very similar to the blending modes you'll find in the layer palette of programs like Photoshop. So you have uh, lighten, multiply, exclusion, overlay, and so on and so forth. One of the things that makes BPR filters so powerful is that you can use qualities of the renders such as depth and shadow and ambient occlusion to also determine how the filter is applied to the rendered image. As I push the shadow slider to the right, the effect is seen in the shadows of the model. If I push it to the left, it's in the unshadowed part. Since I rendered the BPR image with ambient occlusion, I can use the ambient occlusion slider to push the red effect more into the crevices of the model if I move the slider to the right. As I move the slider to the left, you'll see that the red effect is uh, on the exposed parts of the model. This is a great way to come up with some really interesting effects. So I've created a setup using a number of layered filters. At the moment I've turned them all off and I'm going to show you how they look as I turn each filter on and how it affects the overall render. So the first filter I have in the F1 slot is a kind of a yellowish color that I've set to multiply and a very low strength. I've pushed this more into the shadows of the model. In the F2 slot I've added a little bit of noise just to add a slight texture to the model and I've set this blend mode to overlay. In the F3 slot I have just a little bit of blur and I set the blend mode to glow. There's also a glow filter which you can use. It does kind of a similar kind of thing, but uh, in this case I just decided to see how blur would look. You can see I have the settings set so that the depth slider is pushing the blur effect a little bit towards the back. It's very, very subtle, but it adds a nice effect. In the F4 slot, I've turned on the fade filter which blends the model with the background. So in this case, it makes the model a little bit more blended with the gray gradient. And then for F5, I've added just a slight green tint, and I'm putting this in the ambient occlusion of the model. So it's sort of a complement to the warm colors that is just found in the, uh, in the crevices of the model. In the F6 slot, I've turned on intensity, just to sort of pump it up a little bit. I'm using the Fresnel slider to push that to the edges and lowering the strength a little bit. So as you can see that uh, as I accumulate more filters, each one has a subtle effect, but the end result adds a very nice quality to the rendered image that I can control after the render. These filters can be applied to still images your model and also to a turntable. This is a great and easy way to show off your model in the best possible light. In this example, I'm going to use BPR filters to try and make the Centaur model seem a little bit more integrated into the background. So I've loaded a panorama and used it as the background and I've also created a light cap from this image so that the lighting on the model matches the background a little bit better. And now I'll do a BPR render. When the render is done you can see that the lighting has helped to integrate it somewhat in the background but it needs a little bit of extra help from the BPR filters. So I'm going to turn on the F7 slot and I've turned on the fade filter. The fade filter fades the model into the background image, so you can see that when it's turned on and the strength is turned all the way up, the model is literally uh, invisible. So I'm going to set the blending mode to screen, 
and uh, turn up the masking a little bit. And then I'm going to use the Fresnel slider to push that fade to the edges of the model. And you can see as I do this, the transparent aspect of the model starts to look a bit more like a reflection. More of the uh, colors from the background are now bleeding onto the model itself. And this helps it to make it look a lot more integrated into the background. As I turn the filter on and off, you can see the difference in how that adds just that little bit of uh, extra lighting and color that helps to integrate the model into the background. Another thing you can do with VPR filters is add an overall tint to the entire image. So in the F8 slot, uh, I've turned this on and I'm going to set this to the blue color tint and lower the strength. And you can see the tint is applied to both the model and the background at the same time because the mask is still at zero. And this just creates an overall blue tinting which can also help to integrate the model into the background image. And then in the F6 slot, I turn on the intensity filter to help deal with some of the uh, the darkness and the shadows. And uh, finally in the F5 slot, I've added a little bit of noise to the overall image. So I can continue to add filters, adjust the settings, and tweak the overall look until I have it exactly the way I want. And the great thing about VPR filters is it allows me to do this without having to leave ZBrush. I can do all of this image editing directly in ZBrush without having to go to another program such as Photoshop.